Welcome to Pyrography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this episode, we are going to go over the final installment in our Jaguar series. We will be adding a background to the artwork. Now, to do the background, you will have need to have done the artwork from either Part 1 or Part 2. And I will put a link to both of those videos in the description below. Well, let's get burning. Stage 1, Tree Trunks Begin by lightly drawing in some tree trunks with a graphite pencil. Draw as many or as few as you like. Vary the thickness of your trees and the direction that they are growing. If the trees were all perfectly vertical, it might resemble a fence. Instead, we want this to look natural. Now I did purposely avoid drawing around the face. The face is the focal point, and I didn't want any distractions around it. Now draw some leaves here and there on the trees. This is an optional step. I'm not overly sure that the leaves add to the artwork or distract from it. Use the shader of your choice and burn in the tree trunks till they are a dark brown or black color. Use the flat of the shader to help ensure that the edges are not crisp. Keeping the edges of the tree soft will help push them into the background. The color on the trees does not need to be uniform. In fact, some variation would be good. After you block in a couple of trees, then rub over the area with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. Afterwards, reburn the trees to darken them up to their final value. I am using either uniform strokes or circular motion as my burn method. In areas where the edges of the tree are too defined, I burned over the edge using circular motion to make the edge blurry or soft. Rotate the board when working near the log so you keep your pen tip in optimal position and don't accidentally burn over the log. While the board is rotated, burn along the bottom edge of all of the trees. Rotate the board back and finish burning in the trees. Ignore the small area of background I burned in between the trees along the lower left side. I had momentarily forgotten that I wanted to handle that in a separate step. Hopefully you have noticed that I have been burning outside the guidelines for my trees. Also, the width of one tree does not stay constant. Plus, the color isn't perfectly uniform on any of the trees. All of these things are deliberate. They help the trees appear slightly out of focus, and help push the trees into the background. The more you exaggerate these qualities, the further back the trees will seem. As you can see, I added a little side branch. I had debated about adding a number of side branches to the artwork, but decided to keep things basic. Feel free to add side branches to your artwork. Add some leaves to your side branches. It's your art, so be creative with the background. If you haven't done so already, rub over the background with a pencil eraser to remove any residual graphite. Stage 2 Base Color I always blot my pen tip on a dark area of the artwork or a piece of scrap wood before I start burning. This removes any excess heat and helps prevent unwanted blotching. After blotting the pen tip, then burn a line adjacent to the jaguar. Afterwards, begin filling the background with a fairly uniform color. I am using the flat of the shader as I burn uniform strokes. The heat on my burner is set to get a medium tan burn result. My board has a horizontal grain direction. It is easier to burn with the grain line. 
so I frequently burn in a horizontal direction, or I rotate the board. I think it is easier to control the burn stroke when you are pulling the pin tip towards yourself. Rotating the board allows me to burn with the grain direction and pull the pin tip towards myself. Right now I am burning a wide band of color adjacent to the log and the body of the jaguar. I often refer to this as creating a buffer zone. Once the buffer zone is in place, I can switch to a larger pin tip and burn in the background faster because I don't have to slow down and be careful next to the log or the jaguar. It is not necessary to avoid the background tree trunks. I've been burning right over them. If you look at the inset photo in the lower right corner, you will see that the background on my artwork did not end up being perfectly uniform in color. I purposely made the color darker near the log for contrast. Then I let the background color get lighter as I neared the top of the board. As you work on your board, don't obsess with creating a uniform background. Just do your best. Be aware that any variations will look just fine. Plus, if you choose to do stage 3, the variations will add to the texture that will be created in that stage. As you can see, I switched to a smaller shader to work next to the face. The larger shader would have worked, but I didn't feel comfortable doing detail work near the face. As I finish up the base color on the background, let's recap the information. Use the flat of the shader as you burn. If you can, burn with the grain line. That will give you smoother results. Pulling the pin tip towards yourself will give you more control than pushing it away. Overlap your burn strokes. This will help hide individual burn strokes. Reburn over areas. This also smooths out the overall burn strokes. Don't use a high heat. The higher the heat, the harder it is to control your burn strokes. After every pause, before you resume burning, blot the pin tip on a dark area of the artwork or on a scrap piece of wood. Stage 3 Underbrush Start with the section below the hind legs. This is the least noticeable area, so it is a perfect place to get comfortable with creating underbrush. I was experimenting in this section, so I'm not going to explain it. Instead, I'll skip to the next section where I figured out what to do. You can apply that information to this section. Begin by burning an assortment of twigs and branches. Vary their width, color, and growth direction. It is completely up to you on how many or how few you create. Ignore the little spot of white charcoal. It was an idea that I had, it didn't work out, and eventually it will disappear. Once the branches and twigs are in place, burn over them using circular motion to make sure that they are a bit blurry. You do not want crisp edges. Begin filling the background with irregular color. I used a combination of circular motion and uniform strokes for this. As you are working, create random patches of circular motion to represent clusters of leaves. We want a lot of tonal variety in this area. Something to consider is how dark do you want the overall color of the background to be. The darker the background, the more the jaguar will pop out. The lighter the background, the more the jaguar will hide or blend into the background. Either way will look great. I made the color on my artwork darker along the bottom of the board and decreased the darkness near the top. This was done with the idea that more light would be reaching along the top of the trees. If you look at my finished artwork in the lower right corner, 
you can see that the lower part of the body stands out more against the darker background. The face is framed with a paler color, so it doesn't stand out as much. That should help you visualize how the darkness of the background impacts the visibility of the jaguar. Now I want you to remember that it is up to you how many stages you want to complete for the background. After all, the jaguar looked great with just the dark tree branches. So doing stage three is not a necessity. As I create the underbrush, I have been using the flat of the shader to burn irregular patches of circular motion. I also use the flat of the shader to burn uniform strokes to darken up areas. With the branches and twigs, I alter the angle that I am holding the pen tip to reduce or increase the amount of metal in contact with the wood. The more metal, the wider the branch or the twig, and obviously, the less metal, the thinner the branch or the twig. If you are not comfortable making up the underbrush as you go, then I suggest penciling in the twigs and branches. You can also pencil in some leaves and random shapes onto the background. Pencil is very easy to erase, and once you have a design you like, then burn it in. It is interesting to look at the jaguar's face on the screen. This close, there appears to be a lot of contrast between the face and the background. Once you step back from the artwork and look at it as a whole, the background around the face doesn't seem that dark. This is why you should always step back from your artwork to evaluate the tonal values. I will admit, I don't remember doing that with this artwork, and I like to think that if I had, I would have darkened up the area around the face just a little bit more. I mentioned before that I made the top of the board lighter in color than the bottom. This was done by not burning very many branches and twigs. I also decreased the number of dark irregular shapes that represented clusters of leaves. Instead, I filled the board with random texture created mostly by using circular motion. When you are burning along the top edge of the jaguar, rotate the board as needed. This will help prevent accidentally burning over the jaguar. I deleted the video where I rotated the board because it made the video too unpleasant to watch at this speed. Whiskers. The very last thing I did was use the point of a sharp X Acto blade and scrape in some whiskers. The whiskers are not very noticeable, so if you omit this step, it won't matter. Well, that's it for this episode. This wraps up the last installment of the Jaguar series, and like the other ones, I do have a written version of this tutorial on my website, Pyography Made Easy. I will put a link to that in the description below. Now I am very curious if you liked how I presented the material for this tutorial series. Leave a comment and let me know what you think about it. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.